This RC Beginner Series is brought to you by Horizon Hobby. Hey, welcome to the Flight Test Beginner Series. I'm Josh, this is Josh. Hi. And this is episode three. Now we've already talked about in episode one, uh, what plane is right for you. Yes. In episode two, we talked about- Basic aerodynamics. And now this is episode three, where we're gonna talk about control systems. Specifically how your controller works with your servos, servos. and your ESCs in a beautiful harmony. Oh. Was, oh. Yeah, harmony requires two notes. I forgot that. We better stick to flying. And the first thing we want to talk about is your radio controller or right transmitter. Here. Now, radio controllers come cheap, small, big, many functions. There's a lot of different ones out there, but they all basically do the same thing. So imagine your brain wants your plane to do something. And your Don't brain, fly with your eyes closed, friends. But we're imagining. Okay. Anytime Sorry. you're imagining, it's because you close your eyes. Okay. Your brain tells your thumbs what to do. Your thumbs do that on the transmitter, and okay. then something magical happens. Really, magical? Magic, I'm talking- It can't be seen. I'm talking unicorns. Unicorns. And rainbows. Thank goodness, friends. Pots of gold. There is no unicorns and rainbows and pots of golds in this hobby. That'd be really weird and creepy. I think it'd be awesome. But what there but is continue. is something called a receiver. And the transmitter, what you're talking about, when you give your inputs from your brain to your thumbs, and it goes here, what happens is the transmitter packs that information up. So say, for instance, you want to do a right-hand aileron turn. Uh -huh. So you're going to give a right aileron, right? Now what's going to happen is that packet of information is going to be all sorted up. It's going to say, hey, look, I want to go to the right. It's going to send this to the receiver. The receiver is going to receive that packet. And then it's going to say, hey, aileron servos, you need to turn to the right. So it's going to trace through this wire right here, split off to the aileron servos, and give the input. And they say, yes, sir. Right aileron. There you go. Now say you want to go up. Yeah. Go up. Uh oh. It's, once again, it's going right down to the receiver. Now the receiver says, wait a minute, the elevator needs to go up. It's going to go right back to the elevator servo and give the proper input. Up, up, now up, say up. you just you want to do a snap roll and oh everything's boy. to the corners. Uh huh. Go for it. All that information is now being communicated to every servo, even the, <laughs> even <Sorry>. the throttle. <laughs> Matter of fact, while we do that, let's talk about this. The throttle is actually controlled, goes to the receiver. It's going to go through here. Now this is just a signal. Something has to change it to voltage being provided to the motor. It's gonna to go to the ESC. Yes, it's gonna communicate. Electric speed controller. Yep, yep, this is a brushless one. You can tell by three wires. Okay. It's then gonna tell the motor to run at the RPM that your transmitter is going to. Now keep in mind, you can have your, your throttle changing with your ailerons, changing with your rudder, changing with the elevator. You can control all these things at one time. The transmitter is gonna packet all that information up and it's gonna ship it off to the receiver here. Once the receiver receives it, it's and gonna unpack out it. responsibility. And it's gonna say, oh, yo, Aileron, go ahead and move. Elevator, go ahead and move. Say ho yo. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what slang. Uh, we don't. Uses. No one really knows how receivers talk. I, exactly. There, actually, and, and there is a specific language for every receiver, and not all transmitters and receivers communicate with other brands. Okay. So always read your manuals to make sure that, like, Spectrum uses DSMX, DSM2, um, is the older version of it. So you always got to read your manuals. Make sure if you choose a certain brand that you're picking up the receivers that talk to it. But don't plan on picking up a Spectrum or a, uh, a JR receiver and, and expect to talk to Futaba. It's okay. not going to happen. Speaking of the flow, how everything works, one very important thing is, is it takes those packets of information. It has to know which channel to talk to. This is where it's really important to go to the manufacturer uh, documentation and read. Not all manufacturers use the same slot in the receiver for the same cables. Okay. So always read that first. If you look here, this little Spectrum radio here, you can see that's clearly labeled. Right. You don't want to go putting your throttle into where your aileron goes. No Bad way. things happen. There. Yes, All that's right? correct. So always read your documentation to make sure that the proper channel is going to the proper servo. But this is basically the whole entire setup of your airplane. You have your battery, you have it going to your uh, ESC, which has an internal battery eliminator circuit. We'll talk about that later. Go into your receiver, providing power for the servos and your receiver. And then all your controls from that point are branched out along your different servos. And speaking of servos, Let's what are they? Let's talk about servos. They're yeah. like the muscles of your plane. It's a good way to say it, brother. Servos are these little guys with these arms that are telling your, your plane the different functions what to do. Yeah, there's Sorry lots of that. different common servos, but 9 gram is by far the most common with beginner trainer style airplanes. So lots of different sizes. Yeah, yeah different torques, speeds, sizes, they, they go everywhere. But if you guys are hopefully listening from episode one where you're picking out the right plane, most likely if you open up the, your plane, you're going to see something similar to this. Uh, controlling it. All it is is a gear reduced motor with a potentiometer that tells exactly where to go. Nice. All right. Now you talked a little bit about the ESC. There's two types of ESCs. You have a brushless ESC and a brushed ESC. Um, the easiest way to tell you how this works, and most of them are brushless, three wires is brushless coming out to the motor. If it's only two, it's brushed. Now you cannot take a brushless motor and a brush speed control and have them talk to each other. It just simply won't work. So you have brushed and brushless. 
Now in the early days, back when we got into powered aircraft, predominantly electric wasn't there. If it was there, it was very heavy and didn't perform well. It was gas or glow. Okay. And gas and glow, obviously a speed control wouldn't do anything for that. No. It, would, it wouldn't com be compatible. Right. They actually utilized servos to move your throttle body linkage backwards and forward, much like you have in a common car today. Wow. So whether it's gas or glow, you have a linkage moving your throttle body open or closed to get your different RPMs that you needed. Um, but that has all changed. Now it's electronic. Electronic is good. Electronic is safe. You can chop your motor, you can start it instantly, whatever you want, just like that. Start. You can't Stop. do that with a gas. No. But someday you will probably want to open that chapter of this hobby. It's a great chapter. It's a lot of fun and you can do a lot of really neat things and plus the noise is awesome. Yeah. And speaking of back in the old days, we didn't have like with glow and everything, we didn't have a ESC that was cycling down the voltage to talk to our servos and our receiver and power everything. That had to be done separately. The most common and primitive way of powering your receiver and your servos was just through a separate battery. A separate battery. This is what we used to have back on the old, old airplanes back then. Um, basic electronics only required a simple battery. This battery is turned on and off and charged even through this common switch. It was really cool. But you turn on the battery, you power your receiver, power your servos, you go fly, because everything with the motor was done through gas or glow. Okay. All right. Now things have changed, haven't yes, they? Yes, they have. All right. So you can still do this on some systems. You may have this still, but it's very uncommon uh, because we have this beautiful thing called a speed control. Different motors require different voltages to operate. Okay. And that's achieved through having different cells of batteries. The more cells, cells. Cells are the number of, of actual cells in a battery pack. The more cells, the more voltage. We can go okay. into it deeper, but all you basically need to know is, is the higher the cell number, the higher the voltage you're going to get. Okay. But remember what we talked about earlier, the receiver and the servos, they operate off of a lower voltage. Right. And it's constant. It's usually on most planes five to six volts. So if you plug this, this is a three cell that operates roughly 12.6 volts. You plug this into the receiver, guess what happens? Fourth of July. You get the magical blue smoke that never comes back, my friends. But what you have here is something called an internal BEC. So you have your three cell battery right here. It's going to go to your ESC, which is electronic speed control. Uh -huh. What do you think BEC stands for? BEC stands for Battery Elimination Company. Battery elimination. Eliminating batteries <laughs> since 1847. It could be called Battery Elimination Company, but it's Battery Elimination Circuit. Close enough. What is it? It's an internal voltage regulator that will dial down the voltage and then take it back to the receiver, power your receiver and your servos both. Uh, but if it's eliminating the battery, why is the battery still here? When it says Battery Elimination Circuit, it's eliminating this battery. It's oh, eliminating the second one. Your, your five to six cell battery, or five to six volt battery that plugs directly into your receiver. Okay. Okay, so now you don't have to carry the weight of this thing around. All right, Very but cool. this provides the power for your motor. Once again, more cells, more power. Motor's going to depict that. We're going to talk about that in the future. Don't worry. Everything's more streamlined. Exactly. And lighter and less complicated. You have your ESC. What do you do if your ESC does not have a BEC? Man, it'd be nice if you could, like, get, like, a BEC that you, like, attach to it like from the outside. Like an external BEC. That'll work. That's what we have. We have an external BEC. Now, you don't really have to worry about that. This is going to be from later chapters in your RC flight career. But say you really love electrics, but you're getting into some really monstrous size airplanes that require huge power systems, like seven, eight, nine cells. You're not going to see it too common on trainers, but when you get to those power systems, the external standalone BEC will actually be separate. And then you have your own voltage requirements going to your receiver and your servos. But that's going to be later on down the line. Okay. Uh, generally, I know we say generally a lot, for this kind of planes, for the trainers, it's all going to be incorporated into one ESC. Nice and simple. Nice and simple. And speaking of simple, why don't we go ahead and recap? All right, let's sum it up. All right. All right, so you got your radio controller. Yes. And that's how you talk to the plane. That's how you talk to the receiver. Not through magic, but through packets of information being sent wirelessly. It's debatable. It could be magic. But the receiver then tells all the uh, different servos yes. on your plane what to do. And it also talks to your electric speed controller as well. And the servos are nothing but a gear-reduced motor. That's a potentiometer that, that moves the control surfaces where you want them moved. Right. There's three different ways to power your RC control system, and that is just through a standard standalone battery. Now, this has been around the longest, but it's probably the least common now, especially for the beginners, because now most things are electric. Yeah. This is most commonly used on gas. That's going to come later on down the line. The other way is your ESC. With and the BEC? With the BEC internal. BEC stands for Battery Elimination Circuit. It takes this out of the picture and lets you simply communicate off of your battery that's powering your motor. Right. And different batteries or different batteries will be different voltages for your motor. But if you don't have that, you can get an external BEC. Exactly. And that'll be later on down the line when maybe you're flying more powerful systems, bigger airplanes that require special voltages. So that's pretty much it, right? That's pretty much it, my friend. Hopefully explained it well. 
Now, if you guys have missed any of the previous beginner episodes, make sure you go back and check them out. There's a lot of helpful stuff there. And there's also a lot of really great links and information below that will take you to expand on what we've talked about a lot. So if you have any questions that we haven't quite answered, go down below on the links. There's videos, there's articles, and there's content there that'll help explain it to you even further. And we want to thank Horizon Hobby for sponsoring this beginner series. And this is just the third episode out of 10. Yes. So there's going to be a lot of cool Many stuff coming come. up. And hopefully we're going to be flying pretty soon, right? Very soon. Yeah, okay, absolutely. Cool. We're going to get you in the air. Nice. Yeah. All right, we'll see you guys next see time. See you next time.